give them that extra taste. But I'm going to tell you guys something. I've never had bumblefoot. I've never had any diseases with my chickens. And they live here eight months out of the year. The only time that they free range is like late fall, early winter, because they're going to tear that whole area up. You know. Mm -hmm. It's been right here for three years. So the key to it is in about a month, there'll be no compost left because I'll be done with the garden. So all that'll be wheelbarrowed out, wheelbarrowed out, one wheelbarrow after another. When that happens, I'll be back down to hard pack clay and I will layer it. I'll layer it with like wood chips. I will lay down all these leaves, pine straw. I have put shredded paper. I put coffee grounds. I put organic vegetables. I put eggshells. Anything I would put in a compost pile, I started in there like that. Grass clippings, everything. Exactly what I was doing up there in that compost pile. I redo that here. I just reset it up and I back away. And for the next six months, I just add materials every week. And when they're out here eating, I add more materials. It takes wheelbarrows, it really does. But they produce so much. I don't get bumblefoot. My, I do worm them, but I worm them with pepper flakes, jalapeno peppers, garlic, ginger, turmeric, um, comfrey. Natural. Yes. I make it all with apple cider vinegar. I keep a, a root vinegar, apple cider vinegar drink in there. And what I do is I literally will pull it up. My husband grabs them down the throat with one cc everybody gets it they get a good croup massage at the same time they get a toe check they get an eye check we check underneath their wings i do it about every four to six months throw them back in there that's it never had one die from an illness never had I, people are like what do you do with mosquitoes i don't get them like we're out here it's wet and that is compost and poop have you guys really seen any flies like this year round. I was gonna ask how you Buffalo handle the nets. nets and yeah. stuff. And Buffalo <laughs> nets is bad. On right. Stuff. Um, about you? Flipping the compost. They have to have, okay, so all these animals, all these flies and insects we're talking about, they're gonna what? They're gonna lay eggs. Here's the problem. You're putting bedding down in your coops or you're putting gravel or you're putting cement. The eggs are somewhere. Problem is your chickens don't have access to them. They're not gonna see the eggs. So what I do is I give it just long enough for that egg to hatch into a larva or a pupa stage. And then when I flip that compost, I either smother it or bring it to the surface. And when I bring it up, they eat it. Okay. Yep, they're eating all the little larva before that cycle begins again. So they're their own pesticides. Your organic matter is what's helping with the smell, right? Yes. Like when you start smelling, that's what a pig guy told us the other day. Yeah. If you start, he had a deep litter method for pigs. Yes. And we didn't smell any pig smell. That was amazing. Now you smell a little bit where I'm telling you, honest to God, you're smelling this coop right here because they're pooping on top of wood there. That's that's what you're smelling. You're really not smelling that chicken coop. Does the organic matter, I wonder how that works. How does that? It absorbs. So, and it's the same thing with bio chores. So if the smell gets really bad, and sometimes guys, if it is really raining like every stinking day and I can't get in there, and turn it, it does, it smells like a born. Like, I mean, you're just like, Ugh, you know? So what I do is if I have biochar made, I layer it with the biochar. I layer it and it absorbs all that urine smell. It just starts pulling it in. And then because I feed, I feed the rabbits. Now rabbit manure has no smell, but rabbit urine stinks. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna want stuff like the hay and stuff underneath there to kind of absorb that in. But I'm gonna tell y'all, when I flip it, I can smell it. Like when I first flip it, I'm like, whoa, really smells like a, a barnyard. Ammonia. Yes. Mm -hmm. However, once they start to dig through it, that's why I have bags of it over there because I just turned it the other day. You could grow, guys, I don't care what you're growing, you can't beat the compost that comes out of that coop. I layer that too. I'm gonna tell you the other thing I do. I use an organic mushroom substrate <laughs> that I get from an organic mushroom grower that I'm in class with. So every time I see them, they bring me about six bags of it. I open it up, I go in there and I mix it in, awesome. mix it in. So I'm lifting them fungi levels, lifting fungi levels. You have to just think about like natural cycles. If I start seeing a problem, my nest boxes for my does, I just dumped a ton of fur and wood chips in there and piled all that on top of it. It'll bring in the worms, it'll bring in the beetles, it'll bring it all in. Those chickens, if you'll give the bugs a place to lay their eggs and the chickens can, if it's soft enough, I gotta flip it because it'll get a hard pan on it. So you flip it over, the chickens will dig through it, they'll pick out everything. They're their own best pest deterrent, guys. I don't get, I've never, people are like, I dust mine, they get fleas, they get this. 
I have no clue if they have fleas. If they have fleas, it's, it's new to me. I can tell you that the German Shepherd occasionally gets them because he hits these woods like a 85 pound, you know. I'm picking ticks off the ears. But for him, I bathe him about every 10 to 14 days with a little bit of Dawn soap and cooking oil. Mix it together, get in there, wash him really good, let it sit 30 minutes, rinse him off, blow dry him, and that's good. He goes another two weeks. I don't use anything on him. Um, He's never been on heartworm medicine in his life, and the vet told me the other day that his heart sounds amazing. Like, there's no indicator at all. I use all natural ways to just hear heart feel. Uh, he's three and a half. Yeah. So no respiratory problems at all with the chickens? None at all, ever, not once. And if I thought there was one in there, when there aren't biddies growing out right here, I have a quarantine pen, that's usually it, or the one up there, if there aren't roosters in it, I move them away and I watch. For a couple of days and if what i don't if i don't like to see it i have cold chickens my own chickens i'll call them in a heartbeat any animal that comes on this property chicken quail or rabbit has to be quarantined a minimum of 30 days they're quarantined up there like i don't or back behind that white fence their rabbit cages back there they're they're quarantined well away from my breeder stocks i see more people make this mistake you come buy a rabbit for me you take it home you throw it in with your rabbits if if my rabbit has a disease that your rabbit has never been exposed to and your rabbit has no immunity, your rabbit's going to get sick and die from it and threaten to come up with my rabbit, but my rabbit here is not sick. So if you buy biddies for me, you take these guys home and throw them in with your biddies, and my biddies have built up a natural resistance because their environment has taught them to be healthy. You know, like they're in compost, so surely they've been exposed to something and built up an immunity. But if your chickens have been kept on concrete, bleach, you're medicating them, you're only bag feeding them, and you expose my big healthy chicken that's just pooping whatever but can live through it to your little weak system chicken, your chicken's dying. <laughs> and then you're going to be mad at me telling me that my chicken killed your chicken, but my chickens are healthy. So the problem comes from, because I don't medicate anything on my property, my animals that survive here are strong. You bring them around animals that have been medicated and vaccinated, and your animals are going to have a problem adjusting to mine. So I tell people, if you buy from me, quarantine, because I promise I buy from you, it's going in quarantine. It absolutely is. So work with your animals and feed them cleaner, healthier food. Food is medicine. Works like that all the way around the block. Food is medicine. The better you eat, the better you feel. The better they eat, the better they feel. Do you see huh? the red wigglers through the chicken? Sometimes. The babies, I do. When they're still in the brooder and I'm, I'm getting them ready, because I use non-medicated chick feed. So I actually use a game bird grow out feed for my chickens. I don't use, I use quail feed for the chickens, the baby chicks. So when they're like a week old, I introduce worms, the red wigglers to them. And then, then when, and especially this time of year in Louisiana, I move a pen outside and they start coming outside at about eight or nine days old. I turn the heat lamps off. The only time a heat lamp goes on in there would be um, in winter. And I almost burnt it down. If you notice in the chicken coop in there, you'll see a little burnt. Yep, that's when I learned heat lamps are not a good thing. Hmm. So I now, unless I have a broody hen that's hatching out in the winter, I'm not hatching any more chickens in the winter. I'm not risking that ever again. Yeah.